Sports bettors, you need to download Sharps, the better social network. With Sharps mobile app, you can tell your friends bets with one click. See a bet you like? Just click the whale tail icon and boom, it will open in your corresponding sports book. Sharp securely connects to major sports books like FanDuel, MGM, Caesars, and more. So you can not only track your bets, but share your bets in creative ways. So gather the gens, download Sharps for free, and join our fast growing sports betting community. Uh, which will be our Chicago Bears going on the road to take on the Detroit Lions. Yeah, you know, this is interesting. This is actually interesting. I think it looks like Justin Fields is gonna be playing, so let's let's take that in there and to consideration immediately. And then uh, I believe us a clue at Herbert. He got cleared to play as well. So, you know, Hey, uh, a, a fully uh, healthy offense there for the bears. Defense has been playing a little bit better. Right. Um, so, Hey, you know, I, there, uh, something can happen against, I think the lions here a little bit. Um, and, you know, so I, I think the spread is a seven and a half, which I'm like, you know, a, a team like the Bears getting some momentum on their side. Uh, obviously, Justin Fields, he's he's kind of prone to some of those errors that uh, befuddled them for basically just not winning games. And, you know, the Lions have been playing pretty good football uh, this season. So, um, seven and a half. Uh, I'm not going to go on to the spread, but I'm going to get I'm, – I'm actually going to pick the under. Um, I'm going to pick the under. I think it's seven, 47 and a half. Uh, I think with the, the, the way that both these teams play, I think – the Bears, they're going to be able to stop the run a little bit. Uh, I think uh, the Bears' defense has been you – know, they've been better on the, against the run past couple of games. I think they've been holding teams under 100 yards like the past seven games. So, you know, pretty good run defense so far uh, you know, after making some changes there on the, on the defensive coordinator side. So um, – and the Lions, they like to run the ball with David Montgomery. You know, seeing that uh, old face there. Uh, and then obviously Gibbs. So, and I think whenever Goff, they do have, I think they do struggle a little bit when they're able to, when the Lions are not able to establish the run, because uh, he's so effective, I think, in the play action pass here. So I'm a, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to pick the Lions. I'm still going to pick the Lions. I'm not going to go that crazy, but um, yeah, I think it'll be fairly close. But I, I do believe it, it, I'm going to be betting the under there. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game than that uh, 47 and a half total there. So, but. Yeah, picking the Lions overall to win and then betting the under on the 47 and a half. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm with you in terms of this being a competitive game because since the Bears acquired Montez Sweat, um, their defense has started to rise up the board in terms of, you know, yards per game allowed. Like they're now finding themselves in the middle of the league. Um, Their offense as well is like kind of dancing around the middle of the league in terms of, you know, yards created as well. You add fields. Obviously, uh, you know, Herbert back into the mix there. Like, that's only going to help their team, in my opinion. I don't think anything of Tyson Badgen. I really haven't since the start of it. I feel like, you know, he gets he gets a win against Carolina, and folks want to call it a competition. It's just like, man, it was like whoever didn't want to lose the game, in my opinion. So it's just, you know, I, I think that's been a little bit overblown. Like, it's cool that he's got confidence and yada, yada, yada. But he's just, I mean, still, statistically, hadn't hadn't really done much that – you know, would make him look any better than a guy like, you know, Kenny Pickett at, at best. So, um, you know, with that, we know what Fields is. And for him to come back, he's got seven games to prove himself. This is his time. This is his time for Justin Fields, whether it's with the Chicago Bears or with whatever team, you know, is looking at him, you know, from here on out, he knows that, you know, he's playing for pretty much a starting job in the NFL, you know, starting next season. So I think he's completely and, you know, He'll be utterly motivated to go into this game and play well. Um, this is a division rivalry, you know, not always been at the uh, top of the NFC North in terms of standings, but we've always had good games against the Lions over the years. I think that continues. I'm with you in, the, in you know that respect. Also, Detroit, you know, for as good as their defense has been, you know, against the Chargers, I mean, it was a much different game, allowed a ton of points, didn't create a lot of pressure. There were no sacks in, in you know, last week's game for Detroit. So, you know, I could see them obviously, you know, sitting at like seven and two, you know, maybe just taking their foot off the, you know, the the gas a little bit. I mean, I know they're talking Super Bowl over there, which, you know, good for them. They should be aiming, you know, extremely high. And I think Dan Campbell's, you know, got them, 
you know, confidence wise to the highest point they can be, but, but still going to be, you know, eight and two is a very large ask for a team that hasn't really been there in a long time. And, you know, we watched, you know, the Ravens as they've been kind of ascending, you know, up and up the rankings, you know, their ability to maybe get to that eight and two spot was, was stopped short by, you know, Cleveland at the basically end of the game there. I mean, getting some, you know, timely turnovers and stuff. So I could see Chicago, you know, putting up a really good fight here, but, uh, yeah, I think talent's still going to win out and, you know, Detroit's also at home. So that's going to be you know, a huge boost for them. So um, I'm with you. Give me Detroit. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, to that point with uh, Justin Fields kind of like auditioning here, you know, seven games, it, it's, it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting what happens, I think, in the next seven games here. And, you know, it's like, do we draft a quarterback? Do we move on from him? Right. Do we go with, Caleb Williams, uh, uh, Drake May, uh, do we trade out of that and, you know, get MVH? Uh, I mean, I mean, or, uh, yeah, Marvin Harrison over there. It's like, man, so many things I think that can kind of occur. And a lot of, it's, it's great for Bears fans, but, you know, for the decision makers uh, with Ryan Poles, it's like, which way do we go? There, there's so many different directions I think they can take this. And this next seven games will be an awesome uh, kind of addition, I think, going forth because, you know, there, there's enough talent. This is the most talent that Justin Fields has had since he's been here, far, but you know, far none. And then you know, has some continuity with an offensive coordinator from last year. So it's like, if he's not going to get it done now, like he's not going to get it done ever. And yeah, you know, he's he had some you know two two really good games there, two of the best games I think we he's played uh, in his career. And it's like, great. Uh, there's got to be some sort of continuity. You got to be consistent. You got to bring some level of uh, just the yeah, continuity going forth because, you, you know, you can't just have these up and downs in the NFL and, you know, cost the team so many turnovers. And then yeah, that's where we end up losing games. So, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I think what happens with Justin Fields, you know, I think we both set our piece with regards to him. Like, it'd be great if you can't have him. And then, yeah, we just concentrate on building the team around him. But, man, if if he, you know, kind of drops the ball, fumbles the ball a bunch here, um, you know, commits a lot of turnovers, doesn't, uh, progress in his reads and stuff, then it's like third year in the NFL, man. We got to be moving on now. So, but yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting and I think fun to watch to see what happens with Justin Fields going forth. Yeah. Plus, as the Bears, um, you don't need to hold on to Fields as a backup option going into next year if you have Tyson Badgett. Like, I, you know, I'm not a fan of Badgett being our starter, but in the same sense, like, is he capable of coming into a game if somebody's injured and, doing a respectable job. Like, yes, he can do that. So my hope is the bears, you know, keep fields in for these next seven. Um, at the very least, if we lose all seven, that only improves, you know, our draft slot for the bears pick. But in the same sense, it's getting that, getting those looks from all angles, whether they're down in games, up in games, but I'll be honest with you. I'm, you know, haven't looked closely at the schedule here moving forward for the bears, but I definitely see, a few victories uh, coming our way down the stretch. Like, I just feel like this team, you know, with the acquisition of Montez Sweat, you can tell there's like a new energy to them. Um, you know, they're still missing, you know, pieces, you know, across the field. But I think that this team is definitely capable of, of beating some teams in the NFL, you know, for the rest of the year. Yeah. I mean, we got what? Uh, we got Lions twice. Uh, so, you know, it, divisional rival, anything can kind of happen there. Obviously, they'll, they'll be favored for both games. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that that should be interesting. But then you know, we got the Vikings, you know, like we said, mentioned before, without Kirk Cousins, uh, still playing at a high level. But, you know, without that team leader like that, that's that can definitely be detrimental. Uh, Cleveland Browns, yeah, no Deshaun Watson. Uh, Cardinals, I mean, they got Kyler Murray back. But, you know, they, they just haven't been playing the best brand of football, I think, this year. So... Who knows with them? Falcons, they've been kind of up in the air now. I think there's been a lot more criticism with Arthur Smith, you know, not giving B. John Robinson the ball at the goal line. Uh, and then, yeah, we got the Packers who, yeah, they haven't been, they haven't been playing that well this season. So, you know, a lot of winnable games, uh, teams that we can compete against. And I'll be very interested to see how Justin Fields, you know, if he's able to play against the Browns there, how he handles that Browns defense. Like, is he going to fold or, you know, is he going to get it sacked a bunch? Cause He's got to he's got to uh, build off of you know what he's done in previously in his career where he just he just gets sacked he you know does five sips drops and just tries to you know make plays that aren't there and you know 
doesn't just take what the defense gives them. So I feel like that that's just that could be a good way to showcase like what do we have uh, going forth with Justin Fields there. But yeah, some winnable games I think, and you know we'll see what happens I think with Justin Fields. But as long as the Panthers suck and we still get that you know top three pick, then uh, you know I, I think we'll be good uh, going forth in terms of what we can do in the draft there.